Sweden's idyllic Baltic coast. A chilly spring has held back the tide of domestic tourists expected to hit these beaches due to foreign travel restrictions. But it's not such a pretty picture under the water. Rising global temperatures and the impact of fertiliser and sewage have caused huge areas with no or very little oxygen, known as dead zones. The Baltic Sea is the largest human-induced dead zone in the world. It is somewhere around 70,000 square kilometres and it can uh, increase global warming at a rapid rate. The Baltic zone may be the biggest, but the problem is worldwide, increasing by millions of square kilometres in the past half century. The so-called dead zones are either in small pockets along the coast where they lose or gain oxygen according to the seasons, or they're far out to sea where they can be pretty much permanent, cover vast distances and they get worse the deeper you go. Seas like the Baltic have been a buffer against climate change, absorbing excess heat and carbon dioxide. But tests have shown that as surface water heats up, oxygen from the atmosphere can no longer get through, creating the dead layer beneath. So sea floors that should be full of vegetation and life are empty. It's one of the reasons cited in cases where thousands of dead fish have been washed up on beaches. Solutions have been tested in the Baltic, such as a wave-powered device to pump oxygen down below. A more low-tech solution is here, in a UNESCO wetland near the city of Kristianstad. This wetland means we hold water on land for longer before it reaches the sea, so the vegetation can absorb fertilizer and pollutants and prevent algae blooms in the Baltic. So it's one part of the puzzle in preventing dead zones. Some hope emerged last month in the Indian Ocean, where ecologists found a seagrass meadow the size of Switzerland. A vital site of carbon capture and supporting thousands of marine species. But with evidence that areas like this are receding, it may not be enough to mitigate the ever-increasing loss of oxygen from the world's oceans. A number that stands at 77 billion tonnes of O2 in just 70 years. Paul Rees, Al Jazeera, on the Baltic coast of Sweden.